Hey guys, welcome. I'm introducing the E46 M3 to my channel. I just got it and it's now my daily driver. So in this video, I'm gonna walk around the car, show you guys the good and the bad. This will be uh, maybe a year from now, hopefully the car will look a lot better and be something I can be proud of and can look back at all the changes and things I've done to it. Uh, don't worry, the walk around is not gonna have my face in it. I'm sure you guys don't wanna see my fat face much longer. And then we're gonna go for a drive and I'll just quickly explain my thoughts on the car, what it's been like having it the past couple days and uh, it's just what it's like coming from an E60 M5 and an E92 M3 and yes I still have the M5 once I get this car kind of squared away here soon more videos of the M5 to come of course so let's go check it out So we're gonna start with the color. The color is called steel gray metallic, or maybe stahl gray, I guess that's how it's spelled in German. I, I don't think that's how you pronounce it, but I'm not good at pronouncing anything, so please excuse me. But I really do like this color, and right now, it looks amazing with this sky, because they're literally like the same color. Uh, they pretty much match. Um, but unfortunately, the car is not photo shoot ready. I'll explain that in a second. But this would be really cool if this was a photo shoot. Uh, anyways, I do really like this color. Um, in the sunlight, which we don't have much of it here, obviously, uh, it's like a light, there's like a hue of really light blue in it. So it's not just a true gray or silver. Uh, it actually is a really pretty color in the sunlight. So as I was saying about it not being photo shoot ready, so the car is not clean at all. This is exactly the way it looks when I got it. This car sat for a while from the guy I bought it from, and uh, but th there was a few things I had to change in order to get the car ready to drive on the road. So let me explain those real quick. So as you see here, the driver's side headlight looks brand new, and the passenger side does not. The original headlight, where the corner light clips in, uh, that corner piece was broken. Also the ballast was bad, so I just got a whole new headlight from M Parts Worldwide. Well, used I should say. And I do have a lens ordered for that oxidized passenger side, so pretty soon the whole front end will come together. That will look brand new. Car came with a CSL front bumper. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. The windshield, so this is why I couldn't wash the car. This is a brand new windshield. When I bought the car, the windshield before, whoever installed it, did not do a very good job of cleaning underneath the seal, uh, and so the windshield didn't properly sit, and so it leaked water into the car uh, onto the pillar. So, as you can see, you can still see the tape residue along the windshield there, where it was taped off to avoid water getting in there. Uh, so I have not washed the car yet, but this is a brand new windshield just installed. So now the car is ready to be washed, and I will do that after this video. We've got a beautiful dent right there. Uh, yeah, obviously a PDR guy can get that. Uh, suspension wise, we're stock. No, that's not stock. Those are actually ABAC springs. I found that out after installing the S-Tec springs. Shout out to my boy John for giving me the deal on those. What the f Um. So this isn't stock. Those are ABAC springs. They just don't sit all that low. Carry on. It looks pretty bad. It's like almost lifted looking. Some wheel spacers and some lowering springs will do this car wonders, which speaking of which, I actually do have some lowering springs in the trunk. Uh, the car also has uh, Turner rear camber arms. And these wheels are obviously the OEM 19 inch wheels, but they're painted black. No, the car did not come with this. The car did have tint. It was kind of bubbly in some areas, so I started to remove it, uh, and that was before I realized just how big of a pain it is to remove tint, and uh, I have since been too lazy to remove it. The exhaust, I did change up the exhaust. This here is a brand new $650 muffler off of eBay. However, I got it for $200. Shout out to my boy Daniel who found me the deal. Uh, this car came with a Valvetronic Filthy Habits muffler um, when I bought it which looked beautiful, the craftsmanship, the welds, everything about that muffler was great. However, the Valvetronic valves, you know, open and close from a remote, and the batteries in the remote were dead, and they had to be soldered in, which I just didn't want to fool with. Uh, regardless, it was just way too loud, and because this car does have eBay Catless headers, and so paired with that, the RAS was just unimaginable, and the drone was, I just couldn't handle it. And this muffler ended up fixing all that. The car sounds pretty good. Uh, actually, speaking of that, I posted this car the other day without actually explaining that this was mine. If you guys want to hear how this setup sounds with no one talking, just pure M3 sounds, go check it out. It's in the description. And uh, it's actually a pretty good sounding setup for being eBay. 
the tips don't look too bad either. They're three inch tips. They do need to be adjusted. However, I think I will get some bigger tips here eventually. Uh, let's talk about this CSL stick on spoiler. Now from the side, oh, there's a lovely gas cap that won't close. That should be an easy fix. The CSL stick on spoiler looks great from the side. On the side profile, really helps this car, it looks really good. However, up close, you can see this is exposed carbon, which looks cool right here, but the rest of it obviously needs a really good detail job. It's very oxidized and will need a good buff and uh, some clear coat. Thankfully, no dents on this side. However, all four corners, all these fenders are gonna need some work and some new paint because whoever owned it last did have it slammed uh, and obviously rubbed up against the fenders. Here you can really see what I was talking about the color and just how light it is in the sunlight. And as I showed you before, we have zero sun out right now. It's very cloudy. So just imagine what I'm saying. This car in the sun does look good. And now we're back to the front. And here you will see the smoked corner lights. I didn't mention that earlier, but that does, that did come with the car. And I think I am gonna swap back to the clear OEM ones. I think that will just make the front end look a little bit cleaner. Now, before I quickly show you guys the interior, as far as tint, there's 5% on this back uh, and the front has nothing. So I'm debating removing it and maybe doing 20% just to give it like a smoked look instead of like this pitch black murdered out look uh, or just leaving it and not tinting it at all. So the interior, this car has 168,000 miles. And remember, I have not washed it. I have not conditioned the leather. I haven't vacuumed it, haven't cleaned it. So I think it actually looks pretty good for it not being clean. Uh, just your typical E46 interior that has aged pretty well in my opinion. Of course it's going to need a new shift knob and a new steering wheel as the steering wheel has started to peel and just doesn't feel really good in my hands. But I'll tell you what does feel really good in my hands is this Evolution basketball. For those of you that ball, Curry sets, fires, puts it up. that basketball is worth the money. It's a really good ball. So that's the interior. How about we go for a drive, right? Let's go. So the first thing I noticed as soon as I started driving this car uh, was the low end torque. It's it's pretty effortless for, for what I thought it'd be. Um, it's definitely more noticeable in this car than in the E60 M5 and the E92 M3. And real quick, the turning radius in this car is incredible too. The low end torque on this car definitely comes in a little earlier than the S65 and the S85, and that makes a big difference just in day-to-day -day driving, and it kind of makes it a little bit more fun. You just don't have to try as hard. Uh, it's just, you know, I mean, I'm in third gear right here. And easy little bit of gas and it goes whereas the other car it would kind of wouldn't do much uh, so as you heard there the sound that's the second thing I noticed you know it sounds it's got a pretty good tone until 3,000 rpm I'd say and then at like 3,500 has that weird rasp up until like 4,500 and then it sounds great up high uh, but that middle part just you know that beehive raspy ricey sounding sound uh, kind of ruins it for me. I'm, I'm a little bit embarrassed to drive this car sometimes if I'm at a red light and I'm lined up next to like a, a nicer car. I don't want to give it too much gas because I know at like 3500 RPM it's going to make that loud raspy sound which that's just the way it is about this engine, the S54. And so, you know, I knew what I was getting myself into. So I will be experimenting with some rasp eliminators pretty soon and just try and tone that down a bit. Now the next thing I noticed, oh sweet, welcome to the BMW life. The uh, trash control light and the tire pressure light just turned on. There's a good sign of how this ownership's gonna be. As I was saying, uh, the third thing I immediately noticed upon taking a corner was how well this thing handles. Uh, the steering is extremely direct, very responsive. Um, of course, I couldn't have picked a better road for this. Uh, my rear shocks are blown, so they're gonna make some noise back there and it's gonna sound really loud. And the, I mean, zero body roll. This thing really, really does handle like it's on rails. Um, ironically, we're coming up to train tracks up here, so 
Um, no pun, but it really does handle like it's on rails and it's amazing. I cannot wait to take this thing into the mountains because I can. you can just tell this thing wants to go around some corners and it wants to do it fast. And I can't wait for, to do that. The M5 obviously being a completely different purpose built car. Uh, the steering is, is, is obviously more loose. Um, the weight of the car, you really feel that in the corners. So it's just a completely different experience going from this car uh, even the 92 M3, it sound, it's, the 92 M3 is noticeably bigger, uh, and this car just feels as small as it is, because it is a small car, and that's what I like about it, it's different. Um, the rest of these roads are pretty rough, so I'm going to go back the way I came, because yeah, I don't want this all these rattles to be making a lot of noise. So that's the next thing, uh, there's definitely some rattles in this car, excluding the rear shocks that are blown, which are getting replaced soon. Uh, I hear like rattles in my seat, like the seat itself, um, the armrests, things like that. And it's not that big of a deal, obviously. The car having 170,000 miles, it's uh, to be expected. But interior wise and just quality wise, I mean, you know, the E60, my E60 M5, a lot of people hate that chassis, but I've got 130,000 miles on that car and there's zero rattles. E92 M3 is the same thing, didn't have any rattles in that car with 100,000 miles. Um, can't really say that with this, but it's not to the point where it's it's bad or it's miserable or it feels cheap. Uh, this car feels solid. I love everything that you touch, just feels uh, just well put together. The blinker stock, it just has a very nice solid feeling to everything. So the interior quality itself is great. I just think over time, the rattles have come out to say hi. So other than that little hiccup there with the trash control and tire pressure light coming on, this car's been great. I've really enjoyed daily driving this. The biggest thing being the gas mileage as the M5 was absolutely killing me on my 50 mile commute. This thing getting over 20 miles per gallon in the city has been extremely impressive. It's nice to have a car that gets good gas mileage and is fun to drive. The six speed manual is, is definitely something that I enjoy as well as the other things I mentioned. I really do like the way this car handles and the interior, it's just aged really well. This is just right in that era, that sweet spot where it's uh, not too dated and not too too much. Um, I think I think this interior is a good good cabin to be in. Obviously, you spend a lot of time in your interior, so you want to enjoy that, and I do enjoy it. I think I'll like it even more once I replace the steering wheel and some items like the shift boot uh, and knob, the things that are worn, uh, and then they'll just feel a little bit better to the touch. I'll do a quick pull here before I leave, but I want to say thank you guys for watching. Definitely a lot more content to come, and uh, I appreciate it. Coming up to a bump, so I gotta slow down. There it is. Can't wait to replace those rear shocks and get this thing lowered and uh, just show you guys more of this car. So, thanks again, guys. Have a good one.